Hi folks, welcome to part four of Let's Play GEOD's The Civil War. Uh, I imagine this might be a short video. Uh, this turn we're just going to be sitting around continuing to wait for our large army here in Alexandria to uh, train themselves up. If I click on one of these units, you remember last time these icons were mostly red, now they're about half red. Uh, so they have pulled some replacement troops, but they still need more rest and pull more replacement troops to uh, get themselves all the way blue, all the way at full strength. So we're continuing to wait on those guys. I'm just going to let them sit. Other thing is I need to do this turn. I had moved this marine unit to Baltimore to fix that rail. So I'll click this button, tell them to fix that rail. Uh, what else is going on? If you see these blue units, these are just this turn popped up all over the map. I believe there's 13 of them. Uh, and they're militia units. Each each brigade is three militia regiments in them, or two militia regiments in a, in a light infantry regiment. Uh, they're all currently locked all over the map, except for this one, the 2nd Maryland Brigade, which I'm going to send up here to Boston to join the troops I last turn raised in Boston that I'm going to send down here to Fort Monroe. Uh, so there's these guys, they're just sitting there. My uh, reinforcements have arrived at Harper's Ferry, so they're sitting there uh, defending that area. We got a new army popped up here under Robert Patterson, who's a pretty, I guess, possibly the worst general in the game. He's a three-star, but he's a one zero zero. Uh, fortunately, he disappears after a short amount of time because he's ineffective. But uh, these three stacks of troops just popped up. You hear no man's land, sort of in northern, uh, just above Virginia, West Virginia here. I'm going to put them all into one stack. And I'm going to take these two supply units. We'll talk about supply units later and what they do. But I'm going to send them off here. I'm going to railroad them to New Albany, Indiana, just north of Kentucky so that there are some supply units in this area for when I go into Kentucky, which I can't do yet. Kentucky is still not decided if it wants to join the Confederacy or not. So it's just sitting there. Uh, so I'll send those two supply units over there. And the rest of these troops, I'm going to walk here to Harper's Ferry to join the defenses there. Nothing else I can really do with them as far as I could tell. I could send them to Grafton to defend that area. But uh, there's... These are decent troops, but there's not quite enough of them for me to really attack down here in, towards the Shenandoah. So instead of attacking, I'll just send them off to Harper's Ferry and let them sit and defend that area. Uh, and I believe that's just about it. Um, oh, hey, look, here's a, a new general popped up here in St. Louis. This is Nathaniel Lyon. He's pretty cool. I didn't hear about him before I got this game. When I Googled him on Wikipedia, I thought he was a pretty neat guy. Um, but unfortunately, in the real Civil War, he, he died in battle very early on and wasn't able to do much because, uh, you know, he was dead. But before he died, he was pretty effective in holding Missouri in the Union. Uh, so that's reflected. He has pretty good stats. He's a 5 2 2 general, only a one star right now. We will be able to promote him later, hopefully. But. Uh, since he has good stats, that's why I raised troops in this area to give him and allow him to try to attack in the Springfield area uh, with his nice stats. So uh, I think that's just about it. One thing I could show you is uh, if I double click on this line in the, that says the new units are raised. Here are the units I raised last turn. See, most of them are New England. A uh, couple in Rock Island, Illinois, and Chicago, Illinois, and a couple in Indiana. Uh, that's what happens when you raise units. They appear in sort of random places. We raise a unit in Illinois, and it appears somewhere in Illinois, and you don't know exactly where uh, beforehand, although there's some sense to it in that, uh, for instance, Rock Island is a pretty good manufacturing city, apparently, so my... Uh, my heavy, my artillery units that I raised show up in, in, in cities like that, Rock Island. It wouldn't have been any surprise if they showed up in Chicago. Uh, but then sort of, here's Quincy, Illinois. 
sort of a smaller town, regular infantry units could pop up in places like that. So there's some sense to it, but really when you raise units, you raise them in states, and then they just appear in some city somewhere, and you don't know where beforehand. Got a whole lot of them here in Boston, if you recall. And uh, some of them, these three militia units, have already been trained. These one, two, three are already ready to go. So I'm going to add them to the stack under this general that I sent up there earlier to lead these troops. Uh, that's the sort of fourth component. When I was raising reinforcements earlier, I told you you needed money, conscripts, and war supplies to raise troops. Well, the fourth thing you need is time. So you see that these units that I just raised last turn, they're red. They're still being trained. And they won't be ready until next turn or the turn after that or maybe even the turn after that, depending upon the unit. So that's the fourth sort of component. You need money, conscripts, war supplies, and time to raise troops. Which you got to keep in mind. It, it could be dangerous. If I wanted to raise troops in West Virginia right now, well, the enemy has troops in West Virginia right now. And if, if troops were raised in Harper's Ferry and then they took Harper's Ferry, I would lose my troops that I just raised. I must lose the resources I spent on them. So it's useful to m maybe try to raise units more in the back lines rather than more towards the front lines. The downside to that is you need to transport them once they're all trained up. And that can cost you railroad rail, railroad points and such. But uh, anyway, those are the balance, the things you got to think about when raising troops. So uh, I think that's about it. I guess one thing I can point out, in sort of tutorial-wise, uh, since we got time left, uh, is to answer the question, where the heck did I get this money and these conscripts and these war supplies to raise troops? If I hover over New York City, you'll see the answer. Uh, those resources come from towns and cities. Hovering over New York City it might be the most important economic city in the country. If I hover over it, you'll see at the top, that's this box up here, that uh, there's various columns, and the columns correspond to what this city is producing. So you'll see that this city is producing 43 money, 14 conscripts, and 14 war supplies every turn. So holding land, holding cities, is quite important. I don't want to lose New York City, because not only would I lose uh, a battle and, 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 and lose some area, but I would lose supplies per turn. And the Confederacy beginning supplies to per turn by holding that area. So, one of the things I'm going to be doing over the next few turns is to raise troops to come down here and try to take New Orleans, because New Orleans is an area that's making money and some other things for the Confederacy, and I want to take that area so I can gain that money and other things for myself. Uh, so, it's tempting as as the North to just play a defensive game until you've built all your resources up and then attack with uh, overwhelming force. But there is some incentive to attacking early, especially in places like New Orleans, to take that area and starve the South of resources while you get more resources for yourself. So that's what I'll be doing a few turns from now, raising troops for that. But I can't do that quite yet. And I... Uh, so I guess that's about it for this turn. There's nobody else for me to move. Uh, Nathaniel Lyon here is still locked for uh, one more turn. Uh, I've been massing my river boats down here at this confluence of the Kentucky and Mississippi rivers. Oh, the Ohio and Mississippi rivers, excuse me. Uh, just to try to make sure that the uh, Confederacy can't move uh, troops or boats from down the Mississippi here over towards Kentucky. Uh, there's not much else I can do with these river boats right now, so I just decided to mass them in that area. And uh, that's about it. I had already checked my replacements pool and make sure that it remains filled up for next turn and there's nothing else for me to click on. So I'll just end turn and shortly end this video. And uh, next turn maybe we can uh, attack a little bit over in Missouri and maybe get some battles or take some uh, take some land so we're just waiting for this turn to end here